occult injury of the elbow and joint effusion. Elbow joint effusion can be subtle. It can indicate elbow trauma or injury. If there is a history of a fall or trauma to the elbow and the patient has pain but no fracture seen in the x-ray, then we look for the fat pad signs especially the posterior fat pad, which is usually considered as a sign of an occult fracture. There are two fat pads in the elbow. The anterior, it is shallow, and it is in front of the crinoid fossa. The posterior is deep, and it covers the olecranon fossa. Swelling around the elbow or the olecranon fossa have nothing to do with the fat pad. It is merely an olecranon bursitis. The anterior fat pad sits in front and parallel to the distal humerus. The posterior fat pad normally is not seen on the lateral x-ray. It is hidden within the olecranon fossa. Fat pads are seen as a darkened area of lower density than the muscles. This is normal fat pads, seen as a darkened area of lower density than the muscles. And this is displaced fat pads as seen in this diagram. When trauma occurs to the elbow, it creates effusion. The effusion cannot be seen because it has the same density as the muscle, but the effusion displaces the fat pad from its normal position, and the fat pads are dark in the area, so you can see it and you can see its displacement. When joint effusion occurs due to fluid or blood, the effusion expands the capsule and displaces the fat pads away from the humerus. The anterior fat pad will go anteriorly and up. The posterior fat pad will be displaced posteriorly. And when the anterior fat pad gets displaced, the triangular appearance of the displaced anterior fat pad is usually called sail sign, and that corresponds to elbow joint effusion. So identifying an elbow effusion on lateral x-ray by finding the sail sign and also finding the displaced posterior fat pad is important because it indicates trauma or injury to the elbow that causes elbow effusion and displacement of this important landmark. And displaced posterior fat pad is important because it can indicate trauma. Diagnosing elbow trauma can be complex, especially in children. An elbow pain, usually after a fall, may be caused by a fracture. In children, supracondylar fracture is the most common cause of elbow effusion. Undisplaced fractures around the elbow may be difficult to visualize. Interpretation of the x-rays can be challenging. In adult, radial head and neck fracture is the most common cause of an occult elbow joint effusion after trauma. In occult radial neck fractures, effusion and fat pad sign may be absent because part of the radial neck is extraarticular. A radiocapitular view, green span view of the elbow may be helpful in these situations to detect an occult fracture of the radial head or neck. The elbow is flexed 90 degree and the thumb is directed upwards and the beam is directed 45 degree proximally as illustrated in this diagram.
The fad pad sign is one element that's important in the diagnosis of an occult elbow trauma. There are at least four things every clinician got to consider when you read x-rays of the elbow in a child. Number one, you need to have high definition x-rays. Number two, you need to know the age of the patient and you need to know and memorize the timing of appearance of the ossification centers. The cry toe. One, three, five, seven, nine, eleven. Look for fractures and look for abnormalities on the x ray, such as a ossification center that you expect to be there but is not there. Look inside the joint for medial epicondyle fracture that could be trapped. And if you don't find any fracture or dislocation, then look at the fat pad sign. Some of the fracture may be hidden and can be easily missed. The fat pad sign, especially the posterior one, can indicate oboe effusion, possibly from trauma. The posterior fat pad is important, and when you see it, it should be treated as a problem. It means there is an occult fracture. Number four, the capitellum. It's the first bone to ossify, and it is there. On the x-rays, draw two lines and connect them to the capitellum. One is the anterior humeral line, which should intersect the middle third of the capitellum. The radiocapitellar line from the neck of the radius to the capitellum should bisect the capitellum in all views. The anterior humeral line will diagnose supracondylar humeral fractures and the mechanism of injury, flexion or extension. The radiocapitellar line is important in the diagnosis of radial head subluxation. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.